think for a moment about how much a person is able to convey with just a smile. From our facial expressions to our body movements, the things we don't say can convey volumes of information. Of all the things you wear, your expression is the most important. As Peter Gubert quotes, language is a more recent technology. Your body language, your eyes, your energy will come through to your audience before you even start speaking. Good afternoon, students, ladies, and gentlemen. On behalf of Asian Business School, under the aegis of the Asian Education Group, I welcome you all to this very interesting webinar on the captivating topic, importance of body language in career growth. To educate us on the doctrine of body language, we have with us in this webinar, Mr. Rene Desoynik, CEO and founder at IPB Limited, Institution for Personal Development and Body Language, UK. The Oxford University, the, I'm sorry, the Oxford Institute of Body Language, Oxford, UK, and the owner of an international company, drcom.b. A master in body language, a motivational speaker, coach, and trainer, Rene has been delivering enriching insights and results-oriented outcomes to his clients. Rene's seminars, keynotes, and trainings around the world are changing businesses with amazing levels of positive increase. He has shared stage with Brian Tracy, Jarek Robbins, and many other influential speakers. Rene is also hosting preview sessions for Anthony Robbins' UPW event. So let's discover the secrets of body language. Become a mind through body reader and see what's never been said. Analyze, process, transform, break through, and live the life we've always dreamed about. On behalf of Asian Education Group, I extend a warm welcome to Mr. Rene Dizoynik to this webinar. I request you to begin your session, sir. Thank you so much for the amazing introduction. Um, it's uh, always uh, good to, to, to have people uh, following you and having that kinds of words. I really appreciate that. Um, I will share my screen if that's okay. Um, and that's the presentation. Host disabled attendee screen sharing. Is it possible to share my screen, please? Um, yes. Yeah. So if you are all right, this is it. So I'm going to open this. <clears throat> share the screen. All right, we are here. <clears throat> Normally, we should be able to see this. Does everybody see the screen? Is there anybody that could uh, yes. acknowledge? Yes. yes. You can see the screen. Okay. Um, first of all, I would like to introduce myself, uh, where do I come from, who I am. And I was born in Belgium in 1965. Um, in a little house, uh, my parents drove a Renault Dauphine, an old car. Maybe some of you will remind yourself of that little car, Renault. Um, now in 1991, I came back from the army and that city completely changed into Lamborghinis and Ferraris, name it. They probably have it. Knokke is for now, as they say, the Monaco from the north in Belgium. Now in 2004, I said, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm going to live on the countryside and did that. And in 2004, I took the decision to go to Heuveland in a city with 235 people. Most of you will call that a party. And that was our village, 235 people. And what they drive over there is completely different. Tractors and very slow cars. Now, in 2018, I moved to uh, the UK in a, a city called Hitchin, north from London, uh, to continue my business uh, from London. Or my business was based, uh, is based, still based and they drive complete different cars over there. Now in 2019, I moved to Oxford and Oxford is such a beautiful city. Um, it's, it, you, have to be, you, have to be, you have to visit Oxford to experience what Oxford uh, is and has to offer. Um, now, 
I started in the Navy and the, the, the story I'm going to tell you is about following up and following through on what you do on your mission. And I started in the Navy and I went home and I told everybody, oh, I'm going to join the Navy. And so many people said, oh, this is not for you. You're not going to make it. Uh, maybe you know somebody like, like that that says, hey, you're not going to make it. You're not smart enough. And you know what? I applied anyway and I went to the Navy and I got accepted in the Navy. And I was in the Navy and, you know, I saw these people around me with stars and stripes and I said, wouldn't it be great to become one of them? Now, later on, I applied. And if you can see here, I'm on the, on the back of my own platoon in Germany. And my dream came true as where everybody said, hey, you're not going to make it. You have to study for this. This is not for you. And I said, you know what? I'm going to follow up and follow through anyway. Now, the next step was that I saw people jumping out of airplanes, you know, these special forces. And I said, you know what? Wouldn't it be great to become one of them? And everybody told me back home, like, hey, this is not for you. You're not going to make it. Um, this is, by the way, too dangerous. Jumping out of airplanes. Come on, get serious. And I said, you know what? Watch me and I'll show you. And I followed up on it, followed through on it. And a couple of months later, I was jumping out of airplanes. So, and the last step was I was sitting in an airplane waiting to jump and I was watching around me. And in those airplanes, there's no doors. And I could see the pilot. And I said, wow, wouldn't it be great to become a pilot? And everybody back home says, Renee, you have to study for that. You're not smart enough. You're not going to make it. You're stupid. Dude. You're not smart enough. It's, and I said, you know what? Watch me and I'll show you. And I applied for it. And sure enough, I got accepted and went through the course and later on flew my, air, uh, my own aircraft and later on helicopters. So it's not about me. It's not about army. It's about following up and following through on what your destination is or what your purpose is of following a business course, a business um, training. Now, this body language is not about my story. The body language is about body language. Now, where did it all start for me? In 1995. I met a, an, an amazing person called Anthony Robbins. Now, the book you see is in Dutch. I'm from Belgium. I speak Dutch. Mine is my first language. And French is my second. English is my third language. So, <laughs> so, and Anthony Robbins changed my life forever. What I mean about that, I read his first book, Notes from a Friend. You can read it in two hours. And I said, you know what? I, that's my destination. This is my future. I am going to follow up on it. I'm going to follow through. And again, a lot of people said, Rene, get serious. This is not going to happen. This is not for you. You have to study, et cetera, et cetera. So maybe you know somebody like this. I encourage you to not listen to them and to follow through and follow up on your own dreams. Now, the list went on and on and on. The seminars all over the planet with uh, Jack Canfield, with Brian Tracy, uh, Jarek Robbins, as, as, as you mentioned in the introduction. And the list goes on and on and on. And Brian Tracy here. We had uh, James Kahn, James Kahn in London. Um, and the list goes on and on and on. This was in Bangkok. In Bangkok, we had an amazing experience. And this was in Iran in August. And this was Iran in February, last February. So we're traveling the world. Um, what happened as well is that I just got back from Australia. Uh, I was lucky because in Melbourne for now, as you could hear maybe in the news, Melbourne is in a total lockdown. I got lucky I got back a few weeks ago from Australia. Um, had an amazing time there with the people from Success Resources. We were in the headquarters in Sydney and making plans for one of the Tony Robbins uh, session, sessions and the body language sessions as well. So, yeah. Now, if you have any questions, if you want to take contact with me, please feel free. This is the website and uh, have a visit. And if you have questions, I'll, it will be a pleasure and honor and a privilege to answer your questions as well through emailing and messages. Now, body language. Enough with the introduction. Let's get started. Now, what you will hear, what you will see, you might say, you might say is this really true? I assure you, whatever I say, 80% is true. 20% you have to see from a complete different perspective, right? Now, we're going we're gonna to play like the goldfish. We're going to go, we're going to jump from one bowl to the other bowl. You are studying business. That means you are a bit different, right? You have a big, huge, amazing future ahead of you, and you're going to leave the normal to become a little bit different. However, it's an amazing future that you're building. And we're going to have some fun. Believe me, it's always funny with body language. Now, become a mind through body reader. Analyze the sentence. That means you're going to be able to read the mind by reading the body signs. I will say it again. You will be able to read the mind by reading the body signs. And actually, eventually, see what's never being said. Sometimes people don't want to say what they think. 
However, their body says it all. So that is so amazing. They're so uh, great to have that body language knowledge. Now, oh, I'm going too fast. So the next slide is about feeling. How do you feel? And body language is the only language that has no grammar. If you think about when you read a book, there's a grammar attached. When you write something, there's grammar attached. Language for deaf and blind people, there's a grammar attached. Body language has no grammar. That means that how you feel is how you will live your life, attract the people or push them away from you. And what I mean about unbelievable is if I would ask you, how do you feel? I would like you to answer it, unbelievable. When you say unbelievable, you never lie. When people ask you, how are you doing? Say just unbelievable. Maybe use another word. It depends on the situation where you're at. But if you give yourself that good feeling of feeling good, that's just the only thing you have to do. Even if things goes bad, if you say unbelievable, you're not lying, right? I'll, I'll give you another example. If people ask me, Renee, you must make a lot of money with this business. I always answer, if I would tell you, you wouldn't believe me. And people are like, oh, and it's the same with unbelievable. If you say, I'm unbelievable, even if it's unbelievably bad or good, doesn't matter. But you give yourself that good feeling. And that's the body language that will result in attracting people towards you or pushing them away from you. Unbelievable. So how are you all doing? I hope you answered with unbelievable, right? Now, the haka is a, is, a, is a perfect example. I don't know if you ever heard about the haka, but the haka are the people from New Zealand, the Maoris. And what they do before each game, they put so much pressure on their body, on their thinking. And what they do as a result is that they become unbeatable. Not all the time, but most of the time. So if you put yourself on a certain pressure, you'll see things change. Now, I don't know if I have sound. For the French to peel off the track suits, if you can hear this. Stand in front of them and receive the challenge of the And they put themselves in position. You see, and they get so much pressure on their body. And the opponents, they know what they can expect and they're protecting themselves. So as you can see, they put pressure on their body. And if you do that as well, let's say you're in a certain situation back home or, or in, in, a, in a certain place and things go wrong. And then you go, you, you separate yourself in another room and go like, and then you're totally relaxed, right? If you put self, yourself under pressure, things change completely. Now what's in it for you following this body language uh, session is that uh, you're gonna see things that you'll never saw, saw before. Um, as I mentioned, become a mind through body reader and see what's never been said in business, in sales. Uh, you're going to attract people towards you instead of pushing them away. Your confidence will grow and the list goes on and on and on. So what's in it for you? An awful lot. Um, how does the brain work in terms of the body language? Now, the brain works in a certain way in terms of the conscious and subconscious mind. Now, what we do on a regular basis is that we see things and we say, oh, yeah, I can do that, too. But when you realize it, in fact, you're unconscious incompetent. Now, let's give the example of a little boy and he sees a car driving by and he says, oh, wow, I can drive that car too. He's in fact unconscious incompetent. Now, when he gets in that car for the first time, he says, oh, this is worse than playing piano, driving a car. He becomes conscious incompetent. Now, a few months later, when he has his first day on the road with his um, a driver's license, he becomes conscious competent because he pays attention to all kinds of signs, all kinds of situations. And then 25 years later, 
They're driving the car, they're doing this, they're doing that, and they don't think about it anymore, about how to drive a car. And what they become is unconscious competent. Now, why do I give you that example? In body language, it's the same. If you are in business in the near future and you use body language, you'll see your results will go through the roof. Now, in the beginning, it might not be easy. And in the beginning, you might say, yeah, I can do that. And then you say, oh, this is a bit complicated. But the more you do it, the better you become. I've been in this for 25 years. It's amazing how body language gives me so much information and benefits towards my business as well. Now, the brain, we have a conscious mind and a subconscious mind, as I mentioned before. What happens when we communicate from one brain to another brain, conscious, that means what's happening in the moment, what you taste, what you hear, what you say, what's happening in the moment is the conscious. We're transferring 40 bits of data per second. 40 bits of data per second. Now, the subconscious mind is where all the body language goes through. And we transfer 40 million bits of data with body language. 40 bits conscious, 40 million bits of uh, data per second with the subconscious. Isn't that crazy? That's why it's so important to understand that body language will change your outcomes when you use it in a proper way. Now, ever heard the quote, the outside world is a reflection of yourself? That means when I say something with a certain body language that will arrive in your brain, the conscious and the subconscious, it will be processed and come back to me with an answer. That means my outside world is in fact a reflection of myself. Does that make sense? All right. Now the RAS, the reticular activating system, is a part of the brain where focus goes, energy flows. What do I mean about that? If tomorrow you go to a uh, car shop or car dealership and you say, you know what, I'm gonna buy myself a new car. And there's a one particular brand that you love so much and you go to the shop and you discuss it and you know, in the end, you come to an agreement and the, the, the salesperson says, listen, uh, we're gonna deliver the car in three months from now. Is that okay? And you go like, yeah, sure. And then you go in your own car on the road and the one you just bought, you see it everywhere. That's where focus goes, energy flows. So watch out what you're looking at, watch out what you think because that becomes your reality, right? And that will also attract the same kind of people because of your body language, and your verbal. So 40 bits, 40 million bits of data. Body language, so important. Okay, now how can you process this? Is that the, the first part of this session is, is about the brain, right? If you say, where's the body language? It will come anyway, don't worry about it. <laughs> so what happens is that the first part is to discover who you are. This is a list and it's available uh, online. This is a list of uh, words of how you feel. Now there's a red, yellow, green, and blue part with crosses. Now I would always ask people, hey, can you draw a line, a circle around the cross that resonates with you? At the end of that list, we count all the circles together and we'll find out if you're a red, a yellow, a green, or a blue person. A dominant character could be red, yellow, green, and blue. What do I mean about that? Is that when you go to the red one, you're rather an extrovert, team player, emotional, and active and fast person. Where the yellow one is the same, extrovert, team player, emotional, however more calm and soft. The green and blue are introverts, they're solo player. However, the green is calm and soft, whereas the blue one is active and fast, right? Good, that being said, why would you do that? Well, you will ask questions in business. I always ask questions to people. I never speak, I always ask questions. I get so much information through that. And what I found out is who is sitting in front of me. Is it a red, a yellow, a green, and a blue one? And then I find out, let's say I'm a red one and there's a green sitting in front of me. I will change my way of speaking, my vocabulary, instead of red language, I will speak green language. That means introvert, solo player, rational, calm, and soft language. At the end of the conversation, that person will say, oh my goodness, this is the first person that understands me. That is the first way of communicating is level, level with the person right in front of you by asking questions, find out which character they have, and then level, right? Make sense? All right, let's go on. We're limited in time, so I wanna show you as much as I can. All right, good. The next thing is to understand is that we have a right brain and a left brain. The right brain is connected with the left eye and the other way around. Now, the right brain is the rational brain. Uh, the right brain, sorry, the rational brain, the emotional brain. The left brain is a rational brain. They're both connected diagonally with your eyes. So the one thing I would like you to remember is that your right eye 
is your rational eye. And I always give the example of Rolls Royce. RR, Rolls Royce, right, rational. Why is that so important? If you have a communication, a conversation with somebody, you look with your right eye into their right eye. In other words, you connect your left brain with your, their left brain, you will speak the same language. So important in business. Now, the last part in this is that when you ask a question to somebody, a rational question, for example, and they look to the right, they might give you an answer that makes sense. If you ask them an emotional question and they look to the left when answering your question, it might make sense too, because left is memory, right is construction, right? Now, when you ask an emotional question and they look to the right, you might have to deal with somebody who's telling you a lie. Now, don't make your analysis, don't base your analysis on one question. Ask a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, a seventh question. And if you have a red flag each time with each answer that you get, you might have to deal with a person who is lying to you, All right? Make sense? Okay, next. So how do we analyze? We start by looking at people. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna first analyze the feet first, and then we go up. Why the feet first? The feet are the body parts, the further away from the brain. So the less controllable. Your feet will tell you so much more than anything else, right? So feet, legs, hands, and you go up. Micro expressions, by the way, super important as well. What are micro expressions? The expressions of the face, and they only last a split second. Micro expressions, you can find enough information on the website as well. We're not gonna deal with this right now. However, secondly, you can see and you can listen to people. What should you do when you can see and listen to people? You should find out who is sitting in front of me, right? And I refer to races. Races is rational, emotional. Is it a person who is active and fast or calm and soft? Are they extrovert or introvert? Soul players or team players? Once you know that information, you can level if it would come to a conversation. Now, the third part is when you can see, you can listen, and you can speak to someone. Now, what I ask all the time people to do is make sure you use the six W's. The six W's stand for why, which, where, when, who. When you start your conversation with a question with a why, which, where, when, who, etc., you ask an open question. People can't come up with a yes or no. They have to tell you a story. So when you ask questions, Open questions, make sure they bring a story or make an assumption. It's nice weather out today, what do you think? Etc. Et so if you do that, that will give you time to read the body language because they are doing the storytelling, not you. You just ask them a simple question. And the more questions you ask, the more information you get, and you will give the person also a bit of significance because they will feel good because they can do all the talking. Does that make sense? So. When you can see, you can analyze. When you can see and listen, you can analyze. When you can see, listen, and speak, you can analyze again. Three ways of analyzing. Now, this is another one. And these are influences that will change your body language through the day. Now, we all went due to a certain uh, type of, um, how shall I say, uh, situation that you go at the door in the morning and the door smashes behind you and the keys are inside. Did that influence your thought pattern? Of course it did, right? You go out the door, the door is smashing and the key is inside. And you go like, and for the rest of the day, the attitude is set. However, your body language too. So let me give you this example. It's a funny example. I promise you we're gonna have some fun too. Listen. Now that person is on the moon. If that happens to you in your house or outside the house, it's not too bad, you know, when you're on the moon and the door smashes. Anyway, there was another influence that um, changed the, the body language of a person. And that was when uh, President Obama came to London, to Downing Street 10, and he shook hands with a police officer. And I'll, 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 let, you, I'll let you watch. Here they are arriving at number 10. and. Uh... Look at this lucky policeman gets to shake hands with the President of the United States. Oh, and here comes the Prime Minister a bit. No. <laughs> so would that police officer be influenced for the rest of his day, week, month, maybe his life? Because this was on television, right? So situations will influence your body language. 
make sure to handle them properly. Now, we're going to body language now. And the first thing we do when we meet people with the situation right now and the challenges that we have with COVID-19, it's gonna be happening a little bit less, the handshaking. But hey, in general, a handshake, it could be that somebody gives you a hand and they crush your hand, right? Make sure to not do that. That is so undone, it's so dominant, it's so arrogant, it's pushing people away from you. When you squeeze some, uh, somebody's hand so hard, please pay attention to not do that. Now make sure to not have that fishing hand neither. You know that fishy hand, when somebody gives you a hand, go like, it's like, look, that says an awful lot about that person too. They have a lack of confidence, they, they have a lot of insecurities. And when people have that, smart, that loose hand, you might like, oh, and subconsciously, you might even think like, nah, I don't think I'm gonna do business with that person, right? No, next one is the firm handshake, straightforward, give a nice hand and make sure it's a firm handshake. Now this handshake is not happening anymore, but this is from the Roman Empire. In the Roman Empire, when people shook hands, they did this and that was just to check for hidden arms, right? I don't know if today people still checking each other for hidden arms, but this was from the Roman Empire. Now, the next one is a dominant handshake. When somebody gives you a hand and they turn it around, the person with the hand on top of it, right, is dominating the conversation. Now, they can do it conscious or unconscious subconsciously. That means when they do it unconsciously through their subconscious mind, that might be they are a dominant person and, and naturally they, they, they are dominant, right? They don't do it. Some people just do it because they wanna dominate, right? There's two different uh, things to understand here. Either one is dominant from themselves or they wanna dominate when that happens with that handshake. Now what happens if the other person says, hey, they do this and they might do it again, unconscious or conscious is put their other hand on top of it. As you can see here, they put their hand on top of that. Now the third way, this is the same, that's the same. So that person here on the right is dominating. Now the person on the left put his hand on top of it and now he's dominating. Now the last one is when you put your hand on the shoulder and then that person is dominating. This is a game played by politicians an awful lot. If you watch the news, if you watch videos, if you watch, if you see politicians, the first handshake, it goes like this, like this, like this, and then on the shoulder. Some people do it unconscious because they're subconsciously pretty dominant. So if you have a person like that, don't react, just accept it. But in the back of your head, you should think, oh, I'm dealing with a dominant person. Make sense? All right, let's continue. Now, mirroring is so important too. Mirroring is creating a energy at a certain frequency. Now, what I mean about that is that mirroring is, goes as follows. Somebody has a certain position, a posture, a gesture, and you copy paste it. They change their posture. You change too, the same way. They change again. You change with them. You take on the same posture. Now, before they change, you change. If they copy paste your posture, unconsciously, there is a connection, a different connection with a high energy and high frequency. Now watch out if you do that, because if you don't do it subtle, people might think you're laughing with them, you have fun with them. So make sure to do it very in a very subtle way, and if it doesn't work from the beginning, stop it and just continue the conversation, because you have to focus sometimes on the issue or the subject of, of the conversation. So if you use mirroring in the beginning, try it out. If it doesn't work, stop it. Because if people find out you're copy pasting them, you might get into a lot of trouble. <laughs> so as you can see in the pictures, they are copy pasting each other, all right? So mirroring is creating rapport, is leveling. Once you have that leveling, once you have that rapport, once that connection is there, conversations will go through the roof. The results will be amazing. All right, now, when we are a public speaker, what happens a lot is that we point out things. Now, pointing out things, sometimes it's necessary. Sometimes you have to do it this way. But if you point out like this, it is rather aggressive. It's rather dominant. It's rather uh, pushing people away from you. Now, in certain countries, they would do it like this. Hey, I would like to give you an example. And they do it like this. Now, if you do this in Tunisia or in France, you're saying you're a zero. And you're like, oh, really? Yeah. So my advice to my customer politicians and customer 
business people is if you want to accentuate something, you're a public speaker or you have to explain a product in front of an audience, make sure to put your index finger and your thumb together like this. Like, hey, I have a very important detail to mention this time. And do it like this, right? So like this or like this, rather like this. Make sense? You can see it in the pictures, right? Now, the next one is somebody that has an awful lot of confidence. When you speak to somebody and they like this, that means they, have, they, they, have, they are so confident. They know what they're talking about. They're very well prepared. They have an answer ready for every single question. If you like this, like this, or like this, it's the same. However, make sure again, you don't do it in an artificial way. I, I tell my customers, hey, if you do it like this, people will have the impression you're very smart, you know what you're talking about, you have an answer ready for every question, then make sure it is that way. Because if you fake it, you might fake it so much, people will say, hey, what's wrong with the person? So make sure to use it in a proper way. And if you say, I'm gonna use it, I'm gonna fake it until I make it, you know the quote, right? Try it out, but don't exaggerate. I have some customers that exaggerate. I said, ah, stop it, don't do that. Make sure it's subtle, all right? So, um, showing thumbs. Uh, showing thumbs is a very positive sign. Uh, people stick their thumbs out uh, out of their pockets or when they like this, or I have a picture, um, I'm crossed arms, right? With one thumb out. It's on my website somewhere. And people say, oh, wow, that's super negative. You're closed. I said, no, no, no. This is a business way of showing yourself like this and I'm showing one thumb. So subconsciously, you will see this as a positive posture. That makes sense? So when you're sitting like this, you're showing thumbs, positive signal. Showing thumbs, positive signal, all right? Now, seducing is in our world, in our, in our society, uh, a thing that happens too. Now, when somebody seduces you, they will show the left part of their neck. And why is that? Remember, the right brain is your emotional brain, connected with your left eye, your left ear, and the rest of your body, the left part. So when somebody is really seducing you, they might turn their left side, show their emotional side, lift their head like this and show their weak spot, the left side, not the right side, the left side. And then they look like this and they will, and that is a form of seducing. One form, there's so many forms of seducing. We don't have time to handle all of them. I know you would like to, but just one. <laughs> all right. Now, when this happens is that the guy here has a cowboy style. He's very dominant. He grabs his uh, belt and said, hey, you better listen to me. And as you can see, the lady is crossing her arms. She says, mm, nah, buddy, let me hear what you have to say. And I might come back with an answer to you. You see, the person here, the man is dominant and the lady is closing herself like, hey, she's creating a barrier to keep the guy outside because he's too dominant. And if you don't know nothing about body language, this will happen anyway, because it's, it happens subconsciously. Now, when a man is dominant or a lady is dominant, what happens? You see these two pictures often in football magazines or in Formula One magazines, where the, the man is holding his lady or the lady says, hey, this is mine, don't touch. Recognize these pictures, magazines. So when you see this, be aware that these are very close, very attached to each other. So this is a picture that we're gonna analyze. We're gonna analyze the, the picture in a, in a certain way. Now, remember I told you the first thing to analyze is either to see, to see, listen, see, listen, and speak. Suppose we are only seeing a two people speaking to each other this way. What will be the analysis? We start with the feet. The feet, the foot, the one foot, the right foot says, I want to leave. And it's pointing where, in the direction where it wants to go. So when a person is grabbing somebody's arm, the lady's arm, he will explain something very short. However, if you are that lady and you can see that the foot is pointing away, you might just listen and say, okay, mm -hmm, let's wrap it up. Because if you will start a conversation as well, the person whose foot is pointing away might be annoyed because he has no time or she has no time. Depends, right? Does it make sense? So if you look to the feet and one foot is pointing away, that means the person wants to leave. If that happens, wrap up the conversation and let the person go. 
make sure you have a new uh, a new uh, um, a new date in the agenda right so this is another one it's the same as you can see the foot here of the, the guy is pointing away however he's grabbing the arm which is a bit dominant and uh, yeah that's it <laughs> so this one is a position of a lack of confidence sometimes I see people holding their arm and the higher they hold their arms the higher the lack of confidence that means that when you are speaking to somebody or somebody is waiting in a doctor's office or in, in, in a waiting room of a company and they have that position, you have to think like, hey, oh, somebody with a lack of confidence with some insecurities. So if you know that up front, you might have to uh, change the subject or stay, change the way you talk to somebody How, because the outcome is the, form, is the most important thing in the conversation. So watch the body language, adapt to the body language and make sure your outcome is the one you want. So, I've got two tips and tricks. I'm going to wrap it up. It's uh, uh, 11.43 here in the UK. I think uh, we've been speaking for about 45 minutes now or 40 minutes. I'm going to wrap it up. So, one tip I will give away. The first one is, and I already mentioned it, start your analysis with the feed. Look at the feed and then go up. That's the way you analyze in a proper way. The second tip is if you have a interview with somebody, make sure you have a glass top table so you can see through the table what happens under the table. I don't have time enough to explain all of this, but what happens under the table, you'll be surprised. And if you are the interviewer, make sure you have that glass top table. If you are the one who is interviewed and there is a glass top table, be aware somebody knows something about body language. Does that make sense? All right. So, I think it's time for some Q&A, if that's correct. Yes. How was the presentation? Oh, it was excellent. It was... Hope, hope everybody learns a little bit from that short presentation. Okay, so uh, Rene, we have uh, a couple of questions for you. Okay. Yeah. So beginning with the first one, how would a society be different without body language? Without body language? How yes. would it be different? I think it would be very boring if everybody would have the same uh, expressions. Is that, is that the question? Yes, that's the question. Yeah. So it would be, um, I wouldn't say boring, it would be the way it is. And, and, uh, but without body language, uh, it will be based on the verbal only. And if you know, um, in, in, in the, the science in body language, 7% in body language is words. So 7% in communication, sorry, is words. 38 is intonation and 55% is body language. So what would, it, what, what, what would life be without body language? The question is if that wouldn't exist or is the question if we would not know anything about it? Uh, Rene, would you stop the uh, screen sharing, please? Oh, yeah. So that we see you on screen. Yeah. Um, stop share. All right. Yeah. Much better, I guess. All right. Okay. So the, um, the, my question is, is it a a society where there is no body language or is it not knowing about body language? No, if we did not have body language. So not the knowledge of? No, probably you could include that too, of course, but then that would be a very different question. So if, if body language would not exist, it would be very, I mean, boring if it's only words. Let's okay. give an example of a robot. There's robots on the planet right now that yes. they're similar to human beings. Their body language is not there. So it's okay. super, super uh, important to listen to what they say and to mm -hmm. reframe your questions each time. Each time. With, yeah. That's with robots. Um, I had a, an experience with Tony Robbins. He had an interview with a robot, okay, the latest robot that was in uh, Dubai. And he started asking emotional questions and the robot each time answered. This is a, a question I can't answer. Okay. So a life without body language uh, would be very, very, um, uh, would, would be very changing in, in terms of communication. You should be focusing far more than on 
what you say, not how you say it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, how do we maintain effective body language in virtual or online communication mode, which has become the need of the hour in this COVID pandemic? Yes. So, and um, there's a question I get a lot. It's a very interesting question. Uh, it is always good before going online to put yourself in a certain state. That means in a certain state, what I do is breathing exercises. I do know my, my uh, content, so the content is known, but you have to put yourself in a certain state because how you feel is what you express. I don't know if you saw, I, I use my hands a lot and I made sure that part of my body is viewable so I can use my hand and accentuate my words by using my hands. Can you imagine I would do like this and this and this or like this and this and this or like this? So it's okay. so super important that body language that you see a certain part of your body that you put yourself in a peak state. That means no coffee, make sure you drink water, make sure you're in a quiet place, make sure you're not disrupted or distracted by kids who are running around or an engine of a fridge that goes on and off all the time. Make sure that your body language is based on how you feel. What happens around you will change that state. And that is so super important. There's a lot of technical stuff uh, that is important, like the lights and, and the, the materials that you use. But in terms of body language, it's so, so important to put you in a certain state and then start from that state because what you feel inside will come out. Okay. Um, how much should we depend on body language for communication that is compared with spoken language? Um, as I mentioned before, 7% <clears throat> is words. 38% is intonation and 55% is body language. Can you imagine I had 30 to 40 minutes uh, with, with, with this session and I would speak like this. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. It's gonna be a very exciting session. And <laughs> people will fall asleep, right? So how important is it? Uh, the more you practice, the better you become. The, the more years you drive a car, the better you become. The more years you play piano, the better you become. It's all about being persistent and practice it every day, every day, every day. Don't exaggerate, but make sure you practice every day. And how important is it? If you ask me, super important, because the results I personally get from reading body language people are completely different because my questions will, um, so if I ask a question, I get a certain answer with a certain body language, my second question will be based on the answer that I get. Okay. And in the end, my outcome will be completely different. And in business, it's so important in business. If you're in a, in, let's say, in a deal with a couple of millions or a couple of billions, you have to be so attentive because in the end, you want your outcome. And body language, reading the body language is super important in that uh, aspect. Uh, again, practice, practice, practice. And the more you practice, the better you become. Okay. Okay. Um this is uh, a little pertinent. Uh, what are some body language gestures or facial expressions that we should avoid? Um, oh, there's nothing you can avoid. Um, the body never lies. Um, there's three people. It's very difficult to read body language. The first kind of people are the people who are professional actors. They can act as much as they want. You have a hard time reading their body language. The second uh, type of people is the people who are uh, influenced by drugs, alcohol, a uh, high level of using medicines, because you change the state of the body language. And the third kind of people is very hard to read body language is um, pathological liars, people who believe in their own lies, so the body adapts, right? So to come back to, to, to the question, um, could you repeat the question, please? <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> I think you got a little carried away there. Yes, I, I did. said, what are some body language gestures or facial expressions that we should oh, yeah. avoid? Yeah. yeah. Don't avoid them. Make sure that you are who you are. Make sure you're natural. Make sure that you are you. Um, and make sure to be very well prepared. If you go into a business conversation, if you go on an online meeting, if you go, make sure you're you. Don't fake it because eventually, the person on the other side will not see it. However, their subconscious mind will see it and that will give them a certain feeling. If I had that contact with a person, like you had a conversation and you go like, nah, my, my, my gut feeling says no. We all have that. 
And that's just what is, what, is, what is the gut feeling is a result of your subconscious mind absorbing signals from another person and it goes through your gut feeling and it says, nah. So be you. That's the only thing I can say. People ask me all the time, what does my body language tell you? And I always answer, you don't want to know. <laughs> okay. Uh, Rene, how do we get to know, especially for students, you know, this question that always pops up, when is it appropriate or inappropriate to use a certain kind of body language gesture? Um, I have one answer in one sentence ready. Make sure you use it in a proper positive way because karma will catch up with you. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, this is a very, very interesting question that had come up uh, from one of our students. How would you respond to someone who bothers you by using unpleasant body language? How do you react to such a person? Um, one thing I learned through life, um, I'm, I'm turning 55 in November. Well, one thing I learned through life is that your outside world is your outside world. Uh, what other people do or think is none of your business. How you react upon is a difference. Yeah. So what other people think or do is none of your business. If they think wrong about you, if they say things wrong, uh, wrong things about you, that's none of your business. It's how do you ra react upon? And how do you react is like asking questions. Hey, why? And they will come up with a story. What? You know the six W's? And if you feel like this is going completely wrong, you might even say, listen, we have to wrap this up because my time, I'm running out. And you leave the conversation. It all depends on the situation, what the conversation is about. First thing to remember, what other people think or say about you is none of your business. And secondly, ask questions. And if this goes the wrong way, leave the conversation in a polite way, <clears throat> because that's how people will remember you. You never know in the future how you would meet the people again or that person and then say, hey, oh, okay, he was rude to me. However, I was polite, you know? Okay. And when you leave in a polite way, it gives you a good feeling and you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. That's very, very well explained. Uh, from your experience, Rene, how do you see body language being used differently among younger people versus the older people? Um, this is, this is, um, this is um, how shall I say, a generation thing. Um, the older we get, the wiser we become. And we think differently about things. Let me give an example of raising children. Uh, I have four children. My oldest is uh, uh, 32. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. She's 32. And when I had my children, I was like handling them in a certain way. Now, my oldest daughter, who's 32, has now three children of her own. And I handle these grandkids completely different. That's because of age. This is because of generation. And you can become wiser. And the wiser you become... The, uh, you use body language in a different way. Young people do all kinds of things to, to succeed in life. And they think they have 300 years or a thousand years, right? And they go like, yeah, I'm gonna do this, we're gonna do that, right? And they're very active and their body language, it has a certain, um, the body language goes in a certain way. Whereas when you get older and you get wiser, you, you calm down and your body language is different. So is it good or bad? I don't know. It depends on the situation again, on the context. But young people are far more active, which is normal. I've been there, done that, right? As you see my, my story from the army, I was like, nobody's going to tell me I can't do this. And I was like, yes, 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 yes. Whereas today, well, hey, easy, 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 right? So, yeah, that makes sense? Yeah, but then uh, this, they do say that as you grow older, of course, I don't know about getting wiser, but don't they become conditioned with that sort of uh, body language and they persist in uh, continuing that way? What do you have to say to that? Yeah, that depends on who you are. If you, let's, let's, go, let's go back to red, yellow, green, and blue. Um, I'm, I was not going to say this, but I'm gonna say it anyway. I'm more of a red one, a red person, 80%. We're not, never 100% one color, right? So I'm 80% red, I have a little bit of yellow and a little bit of blue. 
Now, what I mean about that is that I'm pretty active, an extrovert. I'm, I'm, I'm a team player. I want to realize things in life. When you talk to a green one, a person who is introvert, and by the way, each character is unique. This is not common. This is feedback. So each character is unique. But if you talk to a green one, you'll find out they're introverts. So they don't talk too much. They're solo players. They're always on their own. Right? They go for systems, security, safety. When they buy a car, the first thing they ask, how are the seat belts? Not the color, not the speed. Right? Depends on who are you. Are you an introvert, an extrovert? Are you like calm and soft? Are you very active and fast? Who are you? And that okay. plays a major role in your life, how you use body language. It is a fact, the older you get, doesn't mean you're wiser. I mean, I know a lot of old people, they, they have the attitude of a 15 year old. Yeah. And I know 15 year olds have the attitude of a very wise person. So it all depends, all depends on the context of, as well. Okay, so uh, we come to the end of these questions here, Rene, and uh, we request you to let us on to the programs that you offer. Okay, um, thank you for that. Um, I will share my screen again, if that's possible. Uh, share screen. Okay, where does the screen go? Um, where is the presentation? Okay, can you see this? No, not as yet. Okay, um, I'll have to push the button again, share screen. Oh yeah, here we go. I should be able to see it right now, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so the Q&A, we did the Q&A. Just wanna add, if anybody has questions, please, uh, connect with me on social media. Uh, I'll be honored and to answer your questions. Um, but please stick to body language, right? Um, I'm on Facebook, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on, on all kinds of uh, platforms. I think I'm on 24 different platforms uh, worldwide. Now, what I offer is a um, course uh, in body language, obviously. Now, what does that mean? All right, a body language online training. Um, because of COVID-19, the coronavirus, I went from 100% stages to 0%. So what we did the last couple of weeks is uh, online business, putting it online in, in terms of videoing, camera. We went to London, we did things in Oxford, um, and we came up with the online training. Uh, more and more uh, companies work online, even colleges and, and universities go more and more online. Now, what I do is the following. Normally, 45 minutes of online uh, coaching, that means through a Zoom or a Skype, normally is 197 US dollars uh, for only 45 minutes. 90 minutes lecture is 647 US dollars. A one day workshop would be 2,127 US dollars per person. And then a two day training would normally be 2.5, uh, 2 um, 2,457 US dollars. This, these are the numbers of what is regular, would do, would, these are the, num the, the normal numbers. Now, I know these, are, um, these things is not, are not gonna happen right now because of the COVID, the reason we have that online training. So what I did is that I offer a one year full access, a one year full access to the online training. That means um, you're gonna be able to watch all the videos whenever you want, uh, if it's at nighttime during the day, the only thing you require that you have to have is either a smartphone, an iPad, a PC, or a, or a, or a, um, a, a laptop, right? And then if you have Wi-Fi, you can access and learn whatever you want. You can focus on a certain subject. Um, the online uh, training, uh, full access to all the chapters of uh, body language, and normally this is a four ninety-seven US dollars. Now I know. Uh, I made something special, a uh, special package for the Asian Business College and the Asian, uh, the Asian Business School and the Asian Law College. Uh, I was so thrilled that I got the question to speak for the audience, for your audience and, and uh, for the participants and the students in, in, in particular, um, because these young people are our future, right? We are busy with our thing, but they are the future. In, in 20 years from now, they will create that. 
So for me, it's very important that that body language message gets out there. And uh, today, uh, the thing I did, a one year full access again, and I'll offer this for 197 US dollars, which is a 14,000 and a bit uh, rupees, Indian rupees. Um, this is the link. If you can't click on the link, click on my website and then online training and there's a coupon code because the price is still 497, but people should go to the coupon code, which you'll see immediately and put in Delhi 300. If you put Delhi 300 in it, you'll immediately get a reduction to 197, the promotion. So this is what I offer. I'm not going to uh, talk too much about it, but it is a complete course. The complete training is online. Each chapter, I think we have like 15 or 20 chapters with different subjects. Um, it goes from the hands and then the standing up and then the science, the, the neuroscience, everything is mentioned there. And you can click from one product to another product. That means there's seven minutes here, 10 minutes there, eight minutes there. So it's not boring on the country. It's, it's, I'm super excited by this. <laughs> we have been filming day and night to get this um, online. So again, one year full access, 197 US dollars, which is a 14,000 a bit um, um, Indian rupees. The link is uh, through Kajabi. Or if you go to the website um, and you will probably with the college uh, or the school share the links as well, I guess. Um, yeah. And the coupon code, remember to put the coupon code in it, Delhi 300, yeah. and you have yeah. full access for one year to the whole course. So that being said, really I, really yeah, I would like to thank before anything, I would like to thank everybody who joined uh, the Zoom. Um, I'm grateful I had that opportunity um, as you can see, this is my information. I'm on social media everywhere. <laughs> That's uh, the main thing today. Um, I'm going to stop sharing the screen. Yes. Uh, if you have any questions about information that you need or that you say, hey, I want to know more about this or I want to know more about that. I have a, a personal situation. I'm here and uh, I'll be honored and privileged to uh, help every single person uh, out with uh, their questions or their challenges. Rene, we've had an amazing experience listening to you. The valuable skill of reading nonverbal cues is indeed invaluable. Your integrity and sense of humor made the session extremely engaging, powerful, and fascinating. On behalf of Asian Education Group, I extend my heartfelt gratitude for you for sharing your time with us and giving us this insight on body language being a game changer for success. Thank you once again for coming here. And thank, thank you for you. having me. Really appreciate that. Thank you. So should I share the links in somewhere or are, is the Asian Business School going to share the links for the... Yes, the school oh, will okay. share the links. Yeah. Super. Thank awesome. you so much. Thank you.